After the dawn of the railway in Ireland, Belfast saw its first railway station built by the Ulster Railway on the 12th of August 1839, and then a further addition was built onto the station terminus in 1848. The station was built on the site of a former linen mill around where Durham Street, then called Durham Place, crossed over the Blackstaff River via the Saltwater Bridge, which has since been renamed to the Boyne Bridge. Since this station was the first to be built in Belfast, Belfast is all it had for a name, but by 1852 there were two separate railway companies that now had their main termini situated within Belfast. This prompted the Ulster Railway to change the station name to Belfast Victoria Street as not to confuse people. Then in 1855, construction on the new Dublin and Belfast Junction Railway was completed with the construction of the Boyne Viaduct that spans the River Boyne in Drogheda. This new railway line connected the Ulster Railway's Belfast to Porta Down line to the Dublin and Drogheda Railway Company's Dublin to Drogheda line. This made Belfast Victoria Street Station one of the most important mainline termini in Ireland at that time. Then, a year later in 1856, the Ulster Railway changed the station name to Great Victoria Street Railway Station and this was to reflect a change in the name of the street the station was situated on. 20 years later, in 1876, the Ulster Railway was absorbed into the Great Northern Railway of Ireland, the GNRI, and thus Belfast Great Victoria Street became the terminus for a network that stretched all across the island as far as Dublin, Londonderry and even Bundoran all the way over in southwestern Donegal. After the turn of the century, two world wars and the partition of Ireland, the railway across the island was vast and sprawling. In 1947, the GNRI introduced the Enterprise, which was an intercity service connecting the capital of Northern Ireland, Belfast, with the capital of the Republic of Ireland, Dublin. This new service had its Northern Ireland base in Great Victoria Street, and was a non-stop service until some time later when the service was altered to have stops at four major towns and cities, five on Sundays, as a way to make the service more preferable and more cost effective for commuters and tourists alike. The Enterprise service was also extended to Cork in 1950, but due to a six and a half hour journey time, among other issues, the extension ceased to exist in 1953 due to its unpopularity. Five years later, in 1958, the Ulster Transport Authority, the UTA, took over control of Northern Ireland's bus and rail services. Three years into UTA control, they decided to modernise Great Victoria Street Station in a bid to keep it appealing for travellers and up to modern standards which, if 1960s architecture is anything to go by, they made it look absolutely boggin'. In 1968, a large portion of the original 1848 Victoria Street Terminal building was demolished and sold off to a company so they could build the Europa Hotel. That same year, the UTA was then dismantled and replaced by the Northern Ireland Transport Holding Company, otherwise known as the aptly named NITHCO. The Northern Ireland Transport Holding Company overseen all bus and rail operations by two newly appointed companies, Ulsterbus and Northern Ireland Railways. As Northern Ireland entered the 1970s, the country saw the bloodiest conflict in its history. As civil unrest spread and terrorist attacks worsened, soon every aspect of daily life was touched by the troubles and the railways were not spared any grief. On the 21st of July 1972, at least 20 bombs were detonated by the IRA all across Belfast in an event we now know as Bloody Friday. At 2.48pm, a Bedford van that had been abandoned in the Europa Hotel car park adjacent to Great Victoria Street railway station exploded. The massive explosion shattered every window in the station roof, along with causing some serious structural damage onto the platform roof structure. Two trains were stationed at Great Victoria Street at the time, both of which were evacuated, but then completely obliterated by the resulting explosion. The damage sustained in the attack, combined with the station's partial demolition a few years prior, almost sealed the fate of the railway station then and there. But regardless, the station remained open and they repaired the damage despite the carnage. But that wasn't the last attack the station saw, as on October of 1973, another IRA bomb exploded inside of a stationed Ulster Transport Authority MED rail car, which completely ripped it apart at the front section. After this attack, the station continued to serve passengers all the way up until 1976, just three years later. But then Northern Ireland Railways made the decision to completely close and demolish Great Victoria Street and Queen's Quay Railway stations. 
Both of these stations were then replaced by Belfast Central Station, which has since been renamed to Lanyon Place in 2018, and this remained par for the course for the next two decades. All Enterprise services were also rehomed at Belfast Central, however bus facilities remained at the Europa Bus Centre as there was no need to move them at the time, and thus a small segment of the former station somewhat survived the struggles of the time. In 1986, a feasibility study was undertaken to see if it was worthwhile to reintroduce Great Victoria Street Station into Belfast again. However, by then, the Great Northern Tower had been built on the site of the former station, and thus any new station would have to be built behind the tower block where the original platforms would have been. The feasibility study did in fact prove viable, and thus work for a new Great Victoria Street Station was put into motion. Almost 10 years later, on the 30th of September 1985, Great Victoria Street Railway Station was back in operation again for the first time since 1976, almost 20 years prior. All services for the Londonderry, Larne, Bangor and Newry lines now terminated at the new station. However, the Enterprise service remains till this day at Lanyon Place Station due to Great Victoria Street not having the capacity to accommodate any further services as the station only has four platforms. Then to round off the millennium, the Northern Ireland Transport Holding Company created Translink in 1996. Translink was created to integrate the services of Northern Ireland Railways, Ulster Bus and City Bus, which is now known as Metro, under one roof. Since Great Victoria Street return in 1995 until the mid-2010s, the station served its purpose pretty well. But in recent years, the station is seriously starting to show not only its age, but also the flaw in its design, as well as how much of a mistake it was to demolish the original station in the first place. The biggest design flaw is that Great Victoria Street Railway Station is situated in a location that is far too constrained by its natural and built up surroundings to allow for expansion of the station of virtually any kind. This space constraint combined with massive passenger numbers are the main reasons as to why Great Victoria Street Station has become so badly crowded and uninviting to travel from, especially since there is very little seating due to the station's small size and the fact that you may be waiting for up to an hour for your train means standing for extended periods of time or sitting on the cold, tiled floor. Great Victoria Street Station in 2023 is known for being very crowded at peak times as well as trains sometimes having to depart two per platform due to huge volumes of passengers. This is exceptionally bad at holiday periods such as Christmas or during summer festivities. This is why Translink invited master plan proposals in 2013 and in July of 2014, Translink chose John McGaslan and Partners Design along with Arup and moved forward in the process of getting planning permission. In June of 2017, the Northern Ireland Transport Holding Company formally submitted a planning application for a new transport hub in Belfast, and then in March of 2019, the planning application was approved. Belfast Transport Hub, later renamed to Belfast Grand Central Station on the 7th of April 2022, was put forward as a way to finally address the issue of Great Victoria Street Station struggling to meet demand and provide a modern, state-of-the-art facility for Ulster Bus and NI Railways to use at their new headquarters. So what are the statistics? Well, this new transport hub is situated on the 8 hectare, 860,000 square feet site that made up the former Grosvenor Road freight depot and will replace both Great Victoria Street Railway Station and the Europa Bus Centre completely. Belfast Grand Central Station is also set to be the biggest integrated transport facility on the island of Ireland with a designed annual passenger capacity of 14 million people which is 8 million more than the capacity of the current Great Victoria Street Rail Station and Europa Bus Centre combined. And on top of that, the station is going to have a total of 8 platforms, 4 platform islands with 2 platform faces per island, which is double the platforms of the current Great Victoria Street Railway Station and would allow for a level of capacity and frequency never before seen in Belfast and indeed Northern Ireland. Once the station is completed, all railway lines in Northern Ireland will have their main termini situated Grand Central, meaning trains from Londonderry, Newry, Warren and Bangor will terminate at the station. On top of that, the Enterprise service will be moved from Lanyon Place to Grand Central, rightfully returning the service to, sort of, its ancestral home.
Grand Central Station will also boast a dedicated lounge for Enterprise passengers so they can wait for their train in comfort. As for the new bus facilities, Grand Central Station will have 26 bus stands, which is 8 more than the Europa Bus Centre currently has. This will allow again for increased frequency and capacity of Ulster Bus and Metro services. On top of that, there will also be a lounge for Gold Line passengers that are awaiting their bus to arrive. This entire development has got people all over Northern Ireland interested, as the government hasn't ever embarked on a mega project like this before. The project itself has wrapped into a further project for a new neighbourhood in Belfast known as Weaver's Cross. Paying homage to the area's linen weaving past, Belfast City Council seeks to attract £1 billion in investment and completely redevelop the area by 2035, the same year the Northern Ireland Railway's rolling stock is due to be replaced. Weaver's Cross will see 100,000 square metres of leisure, residential and commercial space all merged into one. Saltwater Square, which is the name given to the station concourse, is planned to have two new high-rise structures built on either side. Then, on the other side of Durham Street, there will be so-called city entries built on the current Europa Bus Centre site. However, the city fringe you see on this current graphic appears to have been removed from the plans at some point along the line and instead replaced with a large parking area for travellers. TransLink and the Belfast City Council have a vision to provide these new high-rise structures with retail and leisure space on the lower floors and residential and office space on the upper floors all around the new station. On top of that, the station will have ticket barriers, something the NIR network has never had before. But TransLink plan to change that with their new enhanced ticketing system that appears to be planned to launch alongside the new station when it finally opens in a few years. The station will also boast commercial space for shops, cafes or fast food outlets, as well as an upper mezzanine that will likely provide further seating for those looking to relax and eat before their train or bus is due. However, with all of this planned work and all of this planned positive change, there is of course going to be some pushback from NIMBYs and naysayers. Around the same time that the Weaver's Cross and Grand Central Station plans became public, the Orange Order and a handful of residents from the local Sandyville neighbourhood objected to Weaver's Cross and the Grand Central Station proposals. They called the entire proposal bleak due to its use of high-rise structures. They also cited that the Boyne Bridge ought not to be destroyed as it is part of their cultural heritage. This is reference to the fact that the Boyne Bridge, which was formerly Saltwater Bridge until around 1930 when it was rebuilt, is named after the Boyne River in Drogheda in the Republic of Ireland where the famous Battle of the Boyne took place. This battle saw the Protestant King William III of Holland overthrow the Catholic King James II of England. The main thing to note here is that the Boyne Bridge has nothing to do with the historical event itself that it was named after, apart from some folklore and claims that King William III used the Saltwater Bridge to cross the Blackstaff River on his way to the Battle of the Boyne. But this folklore has no sources to prove it actually happened, and thus the argument itself is non-credible. Thankfully, these objections fell on deaf ears, likely due to the fact that the bridge in reality has no cultural significance other than its name. The bridge is still set to be demolished probably within the next 12 months as these markings I photographed recently on the bridge itself are likely to do with early preparations for the bridge's demise. However, that is not to say that when the bridge's demolition begins that Sandy Roo residents or Orange Order members won't make a last ditch attempt to stop the demolition by way of a protest or other means. Hopefully though, if everything goes to plan, Belfast will see this area become its ninth cultural quarter which will be aptly named Station Quarter. In terms of current progress, in 2019, Graham Construction were awarded a contract for enabling works on the site of where the new station will be. By November 2020, they had demolished the old bus maintenance sheds and built temporary staff facilities for all those involved. By February of 2021, the first stage of their enabling works had been fully completed and Phase 2 could begin. Phase 2 saw new bus maintenance sheds built on the opposite end of the site as well as a new bus wash facility, storage facility and other vital structures for bus maintenance. In February of 2022, all enabling works were completely finished and the main construction could finally begin, with construction firms Farrans along with Sacker being awarded the contract for the main construction phase in a joint venture for the two companies. As it currently stands, Belfast Grand Central Station has seen all of its outer walls completed and the main internal structure is beginning to go up, starting with the western end of the structure first. Belfast Grand Central Station is set to be completed in 2024 to 2025, but time will tell if that estimate will hold up. But as of right now, it seems to me personally that late 2024 may be the best ballpark for when the station will finally open its doors.
As for what's next in Grand Central Station's construction, it seems likely that after they finish the main internal structure, they will then lay the roof on top of that and begin working on laying the ground floor concrete before moving on to the mechanical, electrical and plumbing MEP installation. Once the MEP is fully installed and up to standard, the station will then be insulated and waterproofed, taking a hundred years of weather and disaster predictions into consideration. After the building is wired, plumbed and watertight, the building will then see the finishing touches added such as the windows, doors, carpets, tiling, etc. Now whilst the building is getting all dressed up for its big day, some very important things will be happening on the rest of the station's site. The busway bridge will be finished and paved so it can be used by buses, and this will happen likely towards the end of 2023, as TransLink have previously stated. Whilst the busway bridge is being finished, the three track wide rail will begin to be laid underneath it and up to the eight new platforms. The track will then be connected to the main line afterwards. Railway track doesn't take very long to lay, but it is a very detailed process regardless. The track then will consist of multiple stages like laying bottom ballast, placing and spacing the sleepers, laying the rails, adding and connecting points, laying the top ballast and then tamping, which is the process of using a tamper locomotive to lift the rail sleeper by sleeper and pack the ballast underneath using forks. Then they repeat this process multiple times to ensure adequate tamping has been carried out. Any spilled or messy ballast is also tidied up before any trains will be allowed to use the rails. Once the rails and busway bridge are completed and the station building is almost done, then comes a very complex conundrum. How do we transfer all of our facilities from one station to the other? The issue is caused by the fact that the bus stands for Grand Central Station cannot even be started until Great Victoria Street Railway Station is closed so they can remove the track and fill in the old lines and platforms and then demolish the bridge and build a road. But if you're still not grasping how awkward the final stages of this build are going to be, let me explain in further detail. To build the bus stands for Grand Central Station you need to remove and fill in Great Victoria Street Station's tracks and platforms but before you can build all of that you need to get rid of the bridge but the bridge cannot be removed once the station below is in operation as that would be extremely dangerous. But Great Victoria Street cannot be demolished to make way for the bridge to be demolished until the new station is completed and operating so they can start housing all train lines via there instead. So what angle do we attack this issue at? Well the way I see it there are only two main options. Option 1. You take the convoluted approach and build Grand Central Station's railway section and divert all rail traffic to there allowing for Great Victoria Street to be demolished and thus the bridge to be demolished also. Then whilst the bus stands are being built, continue to operate all bus services out of the Europa bus centre until the bus section of Grand Central Station is completed and then move all buses over after completion. This in theory would work pretty well, but it wouldn't have a good look for Belfast or Northern Ireland as tourists and commuters alike would essentially be coming into Belfast via a construction site that would be both noisy and unsightly. Not a good first impression that would give people the ammunition to make Northern Ireland Railways and TransLink look bad for the station being unfinished. Option 2. Just before the busway bridge is due to be completed, TransLink suspend all rail traffic from Great Victoria Street indefinitely and urge all NIR passengers to plan journeys via Belfast Lanyon Place Station instead. The main benefit of this approach is that everything would be out of use and thus you could demolish the old station and bridge, build a new layer for Durham Street and then lay the bus stands. That way, the whole station will be complete at the same time allowing for a proper grand opening for Grand Central. Lanyon Place Station is arguably more fit for purpose than Great Victoria Street Station too, so housing all lines from there for a wee while wouldn't do much harm. I mean, they did it before, didn't they? Personally, I would take the second option as it, in my opinion, is far more doable than option one and it would allow for a much more streamlined construction process for the whole project. No matter which approach TransLink chooses, it will hopefully be the right one as in the end we'll get a new groundbreaking transport hub. If they do choose option two, I can imagine they will probably set a date, let's say for argument's sake, the 21st of November 2024, and they will most likely do a grand opening ceremony with some form of ribbon cutting by the city mayor at the time. All in all, Belfast Grand Central Station will bring about a monumental shift into the modern era for all of Northern Ireland, because currently as it stands, coming into Belfast via bus or rail feels very out of date, almost like second world in terms of the sights you're rated with when you step off the train. Grand Central Station will without a doubt make arriving into Belfast feel like pulling into a real, modern and inviting city. So what happens after Grand Central Station reaches its climax and finally opens its doors? 
Well, that remains to be seen, but personally, judging by current developments, I have a slight suspicion we might see or hear something regarding the mothballed Knockmore line. My reasoning for this prediction is that along with the planned massive capacity increase at Grand Central, Lisburn Railway Station is currently undergoing an extension of Platform 3 due to be completed in 2024. Alongside that, Translink was granted planning permission to build a new Lisburn West Railway Station on a former Southeastern Regional College site that they purchased from the SERC a few years ago. This new station would be situated right on the mouth of the Knockmore line, and a platform on the station side of the tracks would literally serve no purpose other than to serve trains coming to Lisburn from Antrim via Crumlin. If my predictions are correct, this could pave the way for the Circle Line or indeed any other railway expansions in the country. Another final point is that part of the Lisburn area renewals Translink are currently undertaking, they stated that the Antrim branch is to get new bi-directional signalling installed. This is a very interesting development as the Antrim branch as they are calling it currently has no signalling except for at the line entrances to stop trains accidentally entering the line and causing an accident. Personally, I hope I am bang on with this assumption because as a resident of Antrim myself, a new line connecting me to Lisburn directly would be monumental. It would also be a seriously vital asset to the thousands of people that live in Crumlin, Ballanderry and Glenavy. Whatever the future holds for the railways of Northern Ireland, I assure you that it will be bright as long as we keep up the fight. Thank you for watching today's video regarding Belfast Grand Central Station. I just wanted to point out that if you're wondering why I made this video, it's because there was a lot of misinformation and a lot of misunderstandings on the internet regarding uh, Grand Central Station. I've seen people think that it's just a new building and they're going to continue using Great Victoria Street's platforms. I've seen people saying that the Europa Bus Centre is staying there and it's just a new railway station. There, there's a lot of... Uh, feelings by TransLink and the, the Department for Infrastructure to fully explain what Grand Central Station is actually for. So I hope this video helps and hopefully Grand Central Station proves to be a major success for Northern Ireland. Thank you and goodbye.